coup. Engine room is painted. Including the space where we put our water tank. We're now getting ready to install the diesel tanks. They arrived by mail. We ordered them from Speedy Tanks. They were uh, very helpful and the tanks looked like they were in good condition. One of them was a bit damaged on the way, but we just hammered it right back in place. It was very minor stuff though, as minor as minor cuts. They seem to be a mom and pop shop and they do custom aluminum tanks. And I really need a custom tank because my engine room is completely weirdly shaped. By the way, the reason why we order twin tanks and not one big tank is that there's simply no space in the boat for a big tank to come in or out. The original aluminum tank had to be cut in half in order to be removed from the boat. Good times. I'm doing my usual YouTube research on how to install tanks. Basically the idea is... You want to avoid, with aluminum tanks, any kind of crevice corrosion. According to Mr. Lopez himself, crevice corrosion is generally associated with the presence of small volumes of stagnant solution, which is basically, you know, in our case, seawater. We don't want no water trapped beneath our tanks. That's what it is. A, B, Y, C, question. Quiz question. So you don't want to have any holes in which water can get into and not out of and you definitely don't want to use any type of foam or wood because that absorbs water, obviously. And we're gonna use, and it's gonna be my first time using it, this uh, infamous little marine caulking 5200 by 3M. The bond between the neoprene strips and the tank has to be a really strong one because you don't want water getting in between those. So you're gonna put a lot of 5200. You basically cover it up like we do with Cicaflex. Leave it 24 hours to uh, dry and uh, cure. Meanwhile, we install the electric fuel senders that came with the tank. They're not complicated to install and they come with instructions, so I'll spare you. But suffice to say that knowing a little bit about electricity from Mr. Lopez's class helped a lot. 24 hours later. That's my foot. Here we are aboard Infinito, installing the two fuel tanks, 22 gallons each. They're going to be sitting side by side behind the engine in the engine compartment. We've uh, installed the sender unit. Those black strips are rubber strips that are 5200 to the bottom. There's the owner making his grand entrance. When you're gluing the the neoprene strips to the fiberglass itself or the wood on the boat, then you don't use as much because you want there to be some room for flexibility. And if there's you know a lot of movement and one of them falls out, you want the connection to the to the actual wood to uh, break first. Again, to avoid that crevice corrosion. That's based on what I read in this article, which I'll probably link to. Think about how we're we gonna put pressure on this thing now. <laughs> Fill with diesel. Yeah, okay. Jam muscle. We're gonna have to jam it overnight so it doesn't slide down. It's already sliding down. Yep. Preparing for the second mating ceremony of the day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, wiggle it around and. 
200 to spread a little bit. Okay. So that's about it. I put some, I took out the hardware and put it back with Sikaflex just to avoid any kind of galvanic corrosion between the stainless and the aluminum. And they're looking pretty but they were kind of leaning against each other when we first installed them and I could just imagine that there was going to be a lot of vibration so we jammed one of the pieces of, of uh, neoprene in there I used a little wooden block here to jam this thing and it's still pretty pretty in there the tanks haven't really separated I did that before the, the 5200 cured so I thought they were going to kind of stand back up but they didn't so there could be some type of uh, just like a curved situation here but um, I guess that neoprene is just staying in there I don't think it's a big deal I would love to hear your comments about any questions that you might have had from my experience and it's also useful for anyone that may access the video in the future with the intention of getting some clarity on installing diesel tanks the next steps are now going to be to install the Raycor filter, the diesel filter, the strainer that goes on this Seacock right here, and then drop the engine. Thanks for accompanying us and see you on the next episode.